All right, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to our April PTO meeting. If you just heard a message, I did select the record feature. And as everyone I believe knows, we do record all of these meetings and I send them out my weekly message as a YouTube link. If you are a participant today, and we have a lot of participants, which is excellent, just remember to unmute yourself and then to remute yourself when you're not speaking, just to avoid any background interruptions. During our last meeting, we had a lot of questions from some of the parents. That was excellent. So if we have any topics and a question comes up, you could just either unmute yourself and jump right in, or you can do the little raise your hand feature and we'll get you as part of our meeting. And we're going to get started right now. I want to, again, thank everyone for their time. We have some quick updates and some announcements from our PTO president. Jan, if you want to take the lead. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to just update you on our blood drive last Tuesday. It was a great success. We collected 44 pints of blood. So one student volunteer will be awarded a $250 scholarship from the Red Cross. Uh, we really appreciated the food and drink donations as well as the Venmo contributions. I must say the homemade brownies and muffins were a big hit. Thank you to the parent volunteers who helped escort the students once they were uh, done donating and to the student council, they really stepped in and helped to solicit donors last week when we were in a bit of a lull. And so that was really helpful and we hope to have them uh, at our next blood drive, which will be December 19th. Not that we're planning that far ahead, but, <laughs> but we are. Um, I would also like to announce the slate for the PTO positions of secretary and treasurer. The nominee for the Daniel Han PTO executive board position of secretary is Nicole Wiles, who will serve her second consecutive term for the 2023-2025 years. And then we're excited that the nominee for the Daniel Han PTO executive board position of treasurer is Cece Fang. She will serve a two-year term, term for the 2023-2025 years. Um, nominations for both positions will still be accepted. So if you have a nomination, please email us at danielhanpto at gmail.com. And the president and vice president positions are in the middle of their first terms, so they will not be included on the slate. We will vote for the secretary and treasurer position in our May meeting. Um, can't believe it, but we're already starting to plan Teacher Appreciation Week, which is May 8th through 12th. So please be on the lookout for a sign up genius coming after spring break. We will be seeking tan tangible and monetary donations to recognize the teachers that week. And we're planning uh, a donut breakfast, a lunch and a snack day. Finally, if you have any particular topics that you would like us to add to the agenda for the May meeting, please send us an email or email Mr. Salutary and let us know. We'd love to hear from you and cover topics that you guys are interested in hearing. Thanks. All right, Jan, thank you for the updates. <clears throat> Moving on, we have a standing agenda item. Sherry Farmer is here to join us to give us some updates regarding the Night at Hand event. Sherry, thanks for attending this morning. Thanks, TJ. Good morning, everyone. So I just wanted to update uh, the committee on our auction that was held this past Friday. Uh, it was a huge success. So a big thank you to Sarah Valentine and Leah Grenier who uh, co-chaired that event. Um, we don't have the final totals yet, but we do feel confident that we met our fundraising goal for that event. So thanks again to those ladies and everyone who volunteered their time and their money. Um, we only have about half of the memory boards that have been picked up by senior parents. So um, there will be two more events. The dates are TBD um, coming at the end of April to allow parents um, two more opportunities to pick up those memory boards and decorate them. Um, the date that those are due is May 15th um, and that will be here before we know it. So um, if you know a senior parent or you are a senior parent and have not picked up those boards, please be on the lookout um, for um, information coming out about the next two opportunities to pick them up. Um, we received about uh, 660 senior registrations for Night and Hand. We really want to get as close to that 217 number as we can. So if you have a senior that has not yet submitted their form, please do so as soon as possible. We're now in the process of ordering things like lawn signs and swag. So having um, a definite number or as close as we can get is really helpful in ordering those items. 
Um, and the last thing I have is that we're still in need of volunteers to help on the night of the event. We have most of our chairs set now, but we do need, as you all know, a significant number of adults on hand for that night. So please take a look at our Sign Up Genius if you haven't already done so and sign up for a shift or two. Um, we'll take you for two hours or all night, however much you can give us. Thank you, Cherry. Thanks for the updates. Getting closer for sure. And you know the planning is certainly coming together. So thanks for your efforts on this great cause. We have one of our teachers, Gabby Butcher, who teaches Spanish at Daniel Hand High School, who is currently completing coursework to earn her degree in educational leadership. She'll earn an 092 certification, which means she'll have the ability to do positions like assistant principal, principal, department chair, assistant superintendent. She has been doing a lot of work on her internship, and she has focused that work on profile of a graduate. And we have several students who are actually part of today's PTO meeting. This will actually be good for students to hear as well. So Ms. Butcher, we're gonna turn it over to you to share some information on profile of a graduate. Thank you for taking the time to prepare for this meeting. Sure, thank you, Mr. Salutary. Um, thanks for having me. I, as TJ said, I am um, Gabby Butcher, Spanish teacher at hand. And I'm just going to share my screen. Um, let's see. Okay, can we see this profile of a graduate? Awesome, and you can still hear me? Perfect, okay. So um, profile of a graduate, um, it's part of our NEAS accreditation process as well. So I figured what, well, Mr. Salutary and I figured what a great time to kind of present this to parents who might not have a great understanding of it. So essentially what the profile of a graduate is, um, it's a description of the skills a student will need to acquire over the course of their kindergarten through 12th grade education career in order to succeed in an ever-changing global society. So um, we live in this world where there's constant innovations, inventions, um, just society changes so much. And so we felt that um, as a district, we need to focus on a certain set of skills that will prepare our students to um, go out into the real world. And so once they graduate, we have um, 10 skills that we focus on from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. And we deemed them the most important for um, them to be a part of this ever-changing global society. So here's just a little graphic, um, something that I actually learned in grad school. Um, so we have, there have been four industrial revolutions over time. Um, the first one, we had the introduction of steam power, mechanization, the weaving loom, that was in the 1700s. Um, in the 1800s, we had the assembly line, um, electrical engineer, energy, and mass production. The third one in the 60s was, um, the introduction of computers and electronics, which we obviously know has changed um, our lives forever. And then we are currently living in this fourth industrial revolution. Um, and that's like the cyber physical systems that we are dealing with, um, internet, which can do pretty much anything and networks. So here's another graphic that I kind of liked. Um, so this fourth one that we're currently in, um, we've kind of broken the boundaries. Um, there is no, there, there's a blurring of lines between technology and our lives, which we're seeing now with things like artificial intelligence, um, 3D printing, robotics. And, and so we are trying to prepare our students to function in this society of ever-changing things. And so even at hand, we have um, the fab lab where they're learning to use things like 3, 3D printers, um, we teachers are sort of in a panic over artificial intelligence, but it's not something that we think we should ban. It's something we think we should learn how to use properly and then teach our students that as well. So um, that's where this profile of a graduate comes into play, just preparing our students. Um, so I said before, part of this is to receive our NIASC um, accreditation, which we're currently undergoing. And so I won't read this specifically, but you can look and see. Um, here are three standards that 
integrate the profile of a graduate. So NIAS calls it the vision of a graduate. We refer to it as a profile of a graduate. And essentially to receive our accreditation, we need to um, make sure that our students are attaining these transferable skills and knowledge. Um, and then providing feedback to them, which we do when we fill out our rubrics, which have the skills I'll show you soon. And then also family, we think it's important to really have that open communication between families so that you know where your student is um, in progress of achieving this vision. Also, we want it to be embedded into our curriculum, um, which it is from kindergarten until 12th grade. Um, and we want to have a variety of assessment strategies. So not just the classic um, quizzing and testing that we might have been used to growing up, but we have a different, um, we have a bigger um, array of assessments like performance-based assessments, projects, um, a lot more. So we're, we kind of break the traditional mold in that sense. Um, so NIAS came in the fall and they provided us with a report um, and these were two of their recommendations. So first, they want us to develop and implement a system to communicate progress towards the achievement of the profile of a graduate to parents and families. Part of the reason, um, that's part of the reason why I'm here today. And going further, we want to figure out a way to better our communication so you can see exactly where your child is at. And then another recommendation, which we are in the process of doing, is um, incorporating it into all of our written curricula. Um, so all of our curricula has this, but we want to, um, we kind of had, have had to take the old 21st century capacities and revert them into these new um, 10 skills that we have reduced from the 15, which I'll show you. So um, this is how this profile of a graduate was created. It was composed of 28 members all across the board. So we had representatives from the Board of Ed parents, students, administrators, teachers, program coordinators, and instructional coaches. And this group of people really thought that these five um, overarching themes were the most important. So we want our students to think critically, think creatively, collaborate and communicate, self-direct and think globally. And so we really believe that these are the root of all skills if they can, um, if we can help our learners um, be able to do these five things, we think that we are preparing them for um, society. So here's what the old capacities looked like. We had um, 15 skills that we embedded through our curriculum. We called it the 21st century capacities matrix. And here's sort of what a mapping looked like, like a so scope and sequence almost. Um, all across the board. So from kindergarten Spanish all the way until um, 12th grade in the languages that we offer at hand. This is where the skills are embedded throughout our curricula. So you can see in first grade Spanish, they um, have to focus on critical thinking. So specifically synthesizing and presentation. So that was an old um, matrix. We consolidated to make these. Um, so we have 10 skills and it's kind of to, um, we just reduced it to reduce the redundancies that we had. Um, we prioritize what we feel is the most important um, and we feel we made it more student friendly and more parent friendly. So these are the 10 skills that we have embedded throughout our kindergarten through 12th grade curricula. Um, inquiry, analyzing idea generation design, collective intelligence product creation, self-awareness, decision-making, citizenship, and alternate perspectives. So if you're a student in this meeting, you um, have probably seen these before. You have seen these before, you just might not have thought about it. Um, these are on all of your rubrics. Um, I can speak for Spanish class. Um, a lot of our PBAs have at least two of these on them. And then here is what a new map looks like, which I love the um, tiger colors, the hand colors. So instead of the 15, it's 10. And then again, it shows you all throughout. So in grade one, now we have analyzing, design, collective intelligence, and product creation. 
and it goes all throughout. So this is um, this is a visual arts example. Um, each each skill has its own breakout rubric. So if, if you were to click on, and this can be found on our district website as well, as well as this too. Um, if you go into the curriculum part of it, everyone can see exactly where um, each skill is being learned throughout. And so each skill also has a breakout rubric. So here's an example for idea generation, um, which is under the creative thinking realm. So studying a problem need, need or model to consider limitations and new imagine and imagine new solutions and transformations. Um, we aim for three. That's kind of where that, sorry, the light just turned off. In the room. <laughs> um, we aim for threes, but we, um, at the standard is a three. We aim for fours realistically because we want to um, go above and beyond for our students. And so we can adapt these rubrics, um, these breakout rubrics for all classes, for all um, projects or whatever type of assessment we're doing. Here's an example of um, two skills, product creation and idea generation that I use in my um, cinema and conversation class. It's a, a senior class um, where they study film. And um, so this particular PBI performance-based assessment is um, at the end of the trimester, they have watched five movies, um, analyzed them and everything. And so for this particular unit, we focus on magic realism. And so they have to take a scene from a movie that they watched. Um, and using idea generation, they take a few scenes and they incorporate magic realism into them. So they recreate it. So there are two skills that they're being assessed on our product creation, effectively using a medium to communicate important information, and then idea generation, which we already talked about. So they're um, taking something that they that already is, that already exists, and they're making it better almost, making it, um, reimagining it, if you will. So that is um, just one example of many, again, you saw in the, mapping that it's all across the board, kindergarten through 12th grade, that we have these skills, these um, profile of a graduate skills. And um, we really think that it's so important to include them throughout. Any questions? All right, Ms. Butcher, I don't see any questions. I appreciate you sharing that information. You know, students and parents will receive a lot more information about that moving forward. As Ms. Butcher said in that presentation, NEASC did identify a lot of really positives at Daniel Hand. One of the areas of recommendation was communicating more to families about their children's progress on the profile of a graduate capacity. So a lot more to come on that. That's definitely a great start. Gabby, appreciate your work. You're welcome to stay on for the rest of the meeting, but if you have things like classes to teach, I certainly understand that as well. So thank you very much. Our next topic, Ms. Corvino, with some students, I believe, all smiling in the little box, which is excellent, are here to speak to us about the Habitat for Humanity upcoming talent show. So just as a reminder, unmute yourself, and thank you for attending. All right, so my name is Ned Jobson. Uh, I'm Nick Lombardi. I'm Allison Perot. And we're the three leaders of the Habitat for Humanity Club here at HAND. Um, we lead like 20 or so other active members and we go around, we meet often um, throughout the week. Uh, we meet on Thursdays after school at two in Ms. Corvino's room. And um, the main thing that we do is we meet up on Saturdays, um, mainly in New Haven. And we work on the house building process with uh, families that have worked with Habitat and that are in need. Um, and we have a big uh, event coming up. Yeah, so one of our biggest events is we run the talent show at hand. So many people join and the Habitat runs it. We do the stage crew and we help with the lighting as the stage crew joins us. And we raise a lot of money. We give it to raise the roof and you can get tickets at the door or on GoFan, I think it's called. 
that's our big event that we're organizing now. Um, it's really fun because we get a lot of cool talent from like throughout the student body and any teachers um, around the school. Um, and it's also a huge fundraiser for Habitat that does a lot to support our club and like the bigger Raise the Roof Connecticut and Habitat that we're a part of. So that's what we're working on now. Thank you, all, Ned. Remind everyone date and time of the event. The yeah. talent show is the 28th uh seven to ten here at hand in the assembly hall um on the stage the 28th of april yeah yeah and if people recall the talent show years ago pre-covid it was incredibly well attended it's back again and i hope lots of people will consider attending because the the performances are incredible and it's for a really worthy cause so i'd like to thank all the students who shared some information as well as miss corvino again you're welcome to stay on as well but again if you have classes to attend we totally understand that thank you you're welcome all right, our next presenters for Madison Youth and Family Services, Melissa Belletto. And Melissa, is Justin here as well? Uh, no, just me. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not just you. We've never <laughs> framed it that way. But Melissa is here to talk about a few of the clubs that are sponsored really by Madison Youth and Family Services in connection with Daniel Hand. So we usually have Melissa attend a few PTO meetings a year, and we appreciate the support as well as the relationship we have with Madison Youth and Family. So, Melissa? Uh, well, first, thank you for having us come um, and present on some of our programs. So Madison Youth and Family Services runs programs across the whole school district from K through 12. Um, but obviously, we're here today just to talk about stuff that we're doing specifically at hand. Um, so I'm actually going to throw it over to the students because I'm sure you would rather hear from them than me. Um, so Christy, do you want to start with uh, a peer advocate update? You gotta take it off mute. We can't hear you. Could you try unplugging that microphone and just using the microphone that's on the computer? No, if you're having trouble, I can give the update. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what's happening with your computer, but that's okay. So for peer advocates, um, some of the things that we've been working on this year is um, having them go into the freshman health classes and deliver QPR training which is a suicide prevention training. Um, in the past, it's been Justin and I doing that, but we thought that it would be better received coming from student to student. Um, and that seems to be um, being well received by the, by the ninth graders. Uh, another thing that peer advocates have been doing is we've been going into the health classes in the eighth grade at Polson uh, and talking to them about the transition from Polson to high school and giving those students an opportunity to ask um, our high school students some questions. So I think I had about 12 to 15 different students go in there. And um, what's good about that is they get a variety of students. So we have athletes, we have students that are involved in vibe or, you know, really all across the board, different students with different um, interests. So that was really good. Um, and also for peer advocates, we are in the middle of our second training. Um, so we will be finishing that up around Memorial Day. Um, so yeah, so that's really what peer advocates has been up to. Um, and then there's Girls United. Are you guys still not working your microphone? Can you hear us now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'm Abby Richard. I'm Vice President of Girls United. Um, Girls United focuses on female empowerment in many ways. We have like our club and our community that we try and talk about things that are going on in our lives and support each other. We also try and focus on spreading awareness about sexual violence. So this is our second year and we're having our Shine a Light event, which we have on April 30th from 6 to 730 at the First Congregational Church. And we have speakers come 
and share their stories about sexual violence. It was really successful last year and we're extremely excited to have it again. We also have this past year, or we've been working on this for a couple years, but we go to Polson and we have a group and it's kind of like a big sister, little sister mentoring relationship. And we talk to the Polson girls, try and um, uh, create a connection so that they come to when they come to hand, they have a friendly face and just kind of prepare them. It's mostly eighth graders to so prepare them for what high school is going to be like and try and help them in that transition. We um, gave them a tour so they could be familiar with the school before they go on their tour and just try and create a connection with younger girls and help them with a difficult transition from middle school to high school. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Red, you are up to talk about GASP. Yeah, so in GASP, uh, we work to try to make the school community um, more accepting of queer and trans people. Um, and so this year, what we've been doing is we uh, had a presentation in front of the entire faculty on how to use like the proper pronouns for students. And we've also like hosted events and had um, something at Polson and where we brought in Tony Ferriolo, who is a very, uh, widely uh, or well-renowned like activist for trans uh, trans people. And then we also had him come to one of our meetings. Um, upcoming, we're hosting the Day of Silence and yeah. Right, do you wanna talk a little bit about what the Day of Silence is? Oh, yeah. um, so the Day of Silence is a day where students take a pledge to not talk, which symbolizes um, the silence or like the uh, the feelings that like people don't, um, the feelings that people have when they're in the, uh, in the closet. Uh, so, yeah. Great, and Christy, I know I spoke for you. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add? I, I wanna make sure that your voice is heard. Um, I just think that all of the programs that we've done this year have been really successful. And I know that like the QPR and the choices program, I heard like a lot of good feedback from the underclassmen and from the students over at Polson that they really appreciated us coming. So I just think it was like a lot of good work that we've done so far this year. Great, thank you. Um, so I guess I'll open this up to any questions if anybody has questions about any of our programs that we run. All right, Melissa, not hearing any questions. Abby, Red, and Christy, thanks for working on that technology issue and being able to give a report, doing a lot of great things. I have a message about the day of silence and my weekly message going out. And usually we have a lot of students participate. And I thank Melissa and all the support Madison Youth and Family does with Daniel Hand High School. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. So Joy Grabau, who is our hands on stage director, has joined us today with a few students as well, I believe, to talk about our upcoming spring musical, which I'm really excited about. So Joy, if you want to maybe do an intro and maybe intro the students, that would be awesome. Hopefully one of our goals this year is to get more people in the audience at our performances. And it would be great if uh, you know, you don't have to have a child, for example, or a friend in the performance. They're excellent to go to and great entertainment. So Joy, thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. I'm Joy. I'm the director. Um, I've been at hand for 15 years now, and we have a great program. The kids uh, are amazing in there. This year, we're doing The Lightning Thief, which is the Percy Jackson musical. And it's fun, the music is fun, it's exciting to watch. Um, we have a, a cast of 21 high school students. We also have an additional 10 middle school students who will be participating in parts of it. We also have a huge crew and pit band. So a lot of kids get involved and I know that we would appreciate the support. Um, but I'm gonna introduce two students who are here today and they are Theo Zucconi and Ben Lozandro who can tell you a little bit more about the program. And I'm also going to um, share my screen here. Give me a second. Just a few pictures of us at rehearsal. Let's get this up here. And there we go. All right, take it away, guys. 
It's a little loud because of announcements. Yeah. The announcements are happening right now. We're in the cab, but um... so Ben and Theo just pause until announcements are over. Just because we'll hear that echo and we could all take a moment or two and enjoy well, a, little a little bit about what's going on at rehearsal here. Um, we one of the difficulties we actually face is is, you know, lack of space to rehearse, but we make the best of it. We use the vibe risers, which will not be there on the actual stage during our, our performance. But you can see the uh, the top left is actually from our fall play that we did this year around the world in eight plays. And the other two are us rehearsing for a musical. Have we finished our announcements now? Almost. I will give a quick knee ask update. I'll, I have a probably out of order item on our agenda for today. And I don't have the announcements in my office, but just as a follow up to Ms. Butcher's presentation, our faculty has been working after recently receiving a report called the Collaborative Conference Report. I had some parents reach out and ask about the process. And we are very close to finalizing what's required after that visit that took place in October, which is the development of a school improvement plan specific to the NEASC standards and principles. Faculty, every single faculty member had input on creating this actual document. We are hopeful that it's finalized by Thursday afternoon at two o'clock, and then we send it over to the superintendent just for a final, really a review. The central office doesn't have input on the actual plan. That's just part of the NEASC process. Once that plan is finalized through the superintendent of schools, we actually will be posting the entire collaborative conference report, as well as the school improvement plan on our website. And I'll send out some information. Those are definitely two documents that are worth reviewing because they do lead to our continued accreditation. So we're in a really good place. That was a neat opportunity for me to ju just jump in and give the NEASC update. Ben and Theo, if you're good to go now, the announcements are over, so we shouldn't have any interruptions. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I'm Theo. I'm Ben. So yeah, we were just asked to talk a little bit about um, hands-on stage productions and the uh, musical we're doing this year. So um, this is my fifth production in two years with hand and this is my second musical i haven't done anything else with this yet but um yeah it's a really wonderful program and it's the thing is it's super accessible to students here at hand um so many people have so many places to be and things to go to and theater is not a is something that's so hard to facilitate right um it's hard to create a theater outside of this school and because we have the stage and we have the resources, the fact that we are creating something that students can easily um, enroll in is really great. It's so accessible and it's so easy to join and it's so much fun to perform in and it's such a learning experience for students as well. Yeah, and I think that it's really encouraging to join Hands On Stage because it's so well known that if you go to auditions, you are welcomed in no matter what. Nobody gets booted from it if you don't, let's say if you don't do well or something like that. Everybody has a place on in the production, regardless of what it is. And every year it's something new. This year, last year we did Rent, which was a super, very popular. I mean, it was such a great experience and it was such a great show to do. Not only was it fun for the cast who got to learn about these characters in this time period, but also it's educational for cast members for the production team and for the audience as well. Um, I know the next slide has something about crew. We have such a great, uh, such a large and such a dedicated crew. And there's, you learn so many things in crew. There's like their building sets, their painting sets, they're designing sound, they're producing sound, they're designing lights, they're making costumes. Sylvia made a pair of goat pants yesterday during rehearsal and it was just, it's just wonderful to see what we can do with just the things we're given. And truly without our crew, there would be no productions. I mean, they are just as much a part of the show as each cast member on stage, as the any anybody. They are so helpful. They're there if you need them. They are so accommodating for costumes and set designs and last minute changes. They, are, they truly have their hands full, but they do incredible, incredible things. 
And as the boys said, crew is also an all-inclusive program. If you want to be a part of it, you can. I have one more slide. I'm going to apologize in advance for the quality of the video, but you can certainly see and hear the kids at rehearsal. Thank you. 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 So that's what we have a little a little bit of our uh, show to share with you. I certainly hope that you can all make it to see it. It's April 20th through 22nd. I know Mr. Salutary will be sending out links where you can purchase tickets. Um, Theo, Ben, thank you so much for sharing this time with us. And thank you all for listening. That's very exciting. Thank you, Ben, Theo, and Joy. And in my Thursday message, usually Friday, there's a little blurb about the upcoming musical, again, like Joy mentioned, with the link to purchase tickets. So we'd love to see a huge audience. Again, performances three evenings in a row and a two o'clock performance on the Saturday as well. So, you know, looking forward to it. And I really appreciate you joining us today. We'll have to make this a standing, you know, for the fall Fall Play and Spring Musical will invite hands on stage just to share some information. So thank you all. All right, our next topic, we have three members from our school counseling department. We have Christy Coyle, Jordan Millardo, and Deb Rossi, who will be sharing several different updates from our school counseling department, the always busy, highly effective department. So they are just going to unmute and jump in and share a lot of information. Hello, everyone. I'm Christine Coyle, the, the College and Career Counselor at Daniel Han. I'm just going to pull up my screen, hopefully. Can anyone see that? Yes? Okay, perfect. Um, so since the last time I've been here, I think I was at the meeting in February, we've been fortunate to offer some really great programs and field trips and presentations. So this is just a quick recap on some of the things that have taken place. Um, first and foremost, our college and career fair was a huge success and a heartfelt thank you again to the PTO for your generous assistance on the cost of refreshments for the presenters. We really, really appreciate that. But we had students all the way from grade nine through grade 12 coming and I think we had a good amount of diversity in terms of the presenters. So it was overall a very good night for all of the kids and the parents. Um, we offered a field trip out to Porter and Chester. If you're not familiar with Porter and Chester, it is a technical school offering programs such as auto tech, electronical technology, plumbing, HVAC. So some good hands-on trade opportunities for our students. Um, the Middlesex Health Clinic offered a career day. This is a really fantastic field trip for our students. They set up all different kinds of stations and students got to hear from professionals from a variety of different jobs at the clinic, like doctors, nurses, physical therapists, EMS, phlebotomy, radiology, and the students really got to participate in some hands-on activities. They actually let them use the ultrasound machine and they... Um, did an exercise where they learned how to stitch sutures using a pig skin. They toured the Lifestar helicopter. So it was really fun for our students interested in healthcare. Um, we were able to take some trips to some manufacturing industries like Moroso, which is down the road in Guilford. It's a supplier of automotive equipment for racing and street performance. So that was really fun for our kids. Um, our partnerships with Webco and Electric Boat have been really important to us. They've been particularly beneficial because they're really opening up some amazing opportunities for our students. We have a senior who has already offered a full-time position at Electric Boat after graduation. And we have an underclassman who has offered a summer internship at Webco. So we're really grateful of the relationships that we've developed with these companies. Um, for our future teachers, 
we had two students from Quinnipiac University in. They're from the Future Teachers Club there. And I think our students really benefited from the discussion and the question and answer session. The Quinnipiac kids were able to offer them a lot of insight about um, certification process and student teaching and that sort of thing. So that was a great morning when they came down. Um, we also had an interesting woman from the Department of Public Health come in to talk about her 40 year career in epidemiology. You can imagine she had some interesting stories to share. So our kids really enjoyed that. And then finally, just yesterday, we actually had Alicia Farrell in. She was a cognitive psychologist and she talked with the junior class about stress and anxiety, how to change your mindset to a more positive one, and then just learning how to develop realistic and achievable expectations. And I think that was pretty well received. So um, we look forward to having her in again. Um, right now, the school counseling department is working on organizing an event for juniors in May that's going to focus on post-secondary planning. So we're still establishing the details of the exact setup of the day. But what we're looking to do is have a variety of workshops centering on topics that will help students with their future plans. So you can see some of the topics listed here, but really we're planning sessions on everything from navigating the college search to resume writing to taking a gap year. And the students will be able to select which sessions interest them the most, and they'll be able to attend three different sessions on that day. So we hope that that will be a, a helpful day and um, giving kids some options for what's to come after high school. And then uh, just some other upcoming events between now and the end of the year. Right after April break, I have a trip going out to Middlesex Community College. We're going to take a tour of campus and meet with the admissions staff. And if you don't know this already, all students can attend commu Connecticut Community College for free. So with college tuition becoming more and more expensive every year, I think community college is a really good option for kids to consider, even for those students who might be thinking that a bachelor's degree is ultimately what they want. It could be a good way to get the general ed requirements taken care of for free and then transfer to a four year university to finish up the degree. So if you have any juniors or seniors that want to take a look at this as an option, please send them my way. I do have a few spots available still on that trip. Um, for kids interested in trades, we have a construction career day coming up on May 3rd, and I think this will be a really enjoyable trip for students. The careers that are being highlighted are listed here, and students are going to have some opportunity to participate in some really great hands-on activities like using a variety of power tools, um, building a masonry wall, cutting tile, operating a skid steer and excavator. So it should be really helpful and fun for these kids. Um, it's open to all grade levels and I definitely do still have room. So if you know of any students who might be interested in attending that, just send them my way. And then finally, we have our common application workshops coming up. So Kyle Hines, a member of the school counseling department has been running these workshops for a number of years. They've been really successful and the students have really benefited from getting some direct instruction on how to complete the applications. The workshops will again be offered this summer, but this year we're also going to offer a few early bird sessions in May for those students, <coughs> excuse me, who would prefer to get a, a head start even on, on the application this spring. And we're hoping that the added sessions will provide more flexible options for students so that they can select something that works best with their schedule. So before I toss um, this on to Mrs. Rossi. Does anyone have any questions about anything that's been going on in the College and Career Center? All right, thank you. So you guys able to see the school counseling updates? Yes, Deb. All right. So thank you for your time today. My name is Deborah Rossi. I'm a member of the school counseling department, and I'm also going to be joined by Jordan Malardo. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the updates in addition to the some of the daily things that we're doing. Um, you know, with the school counseling department, we also have kind of initiatives that we're working through to let you know where our timelines and things are. Um, we're about wrapping up uh, junior meetings, so where we have the parents come in and we meet with every family individually and the junior. Um, to talk about future planning, what do they want to do when they graduate, um, you know, what kind of timeline are they looking 
looking for, um, get them in touch with um, possibly Mrs. Coyle or you know some resume building and some college search and things that is going to make their future um, a little more streamlined as they have the next year and a half to prepare. Um, so we're just about finishing up those meetings. We have some few that we, you know, each counselor has just a few left. Um, and in addition to that, while that was going on, we had the course registration where we were able to meet with every student to talk about the courses that they wanted to choose for next year and what, um, you know, is it kind of aligning with any of their interests or, you know, possible career paths moving, moving forward. Um, so we were, you know, they were quick 10 minute meetings, but they were really, really powerful for the student to be able to connect with their counselor and be able to kind of get a, you know, collaborative approach in choosing their courses for the next year. Um, in March, we just finished with our um, SAT administration. So we did the school day SAT. We had broke it into two piece, two parts where we had about 100 students um, each time, each Wednesday that they came in to take the SAT. It was done on the computer. Um, so we had, you know, pretty, pretty smooth, even with the technology challenges. Um, so the students were able to take that um, at least for some of many of them the first time that they'll take their SAT. Um, so they should be getting those scores back in the next couple of weeks. Um, based on there and discussions with their school counselors, if they're going to take another SAT, we are offering the May 6th one here at Daniel Hand, and students can go and sign up through College Board to be able to take that as a second round if they want to try to improve their scores or if they wanted to, um, you know, uh, kind of, you know, take a, a study course before that or anything, they have plenty of time to do that. That would be a May 6th, and there's also a June date. Um, but we'll be having the May 6th one here at Daniel Hand. Um, so going into May, we'll be doing AP exams. Um, on our website, there is the timeline. It's about May 1st through May 12th. AP exams will be offered um, you know, throughout the school and the school counseling department will be running that. And you can click, uh, go to our website under the school counseling page and see the uh, schedule for the exams for any students that are taking advanced placement courses in various uh, areas of our curriculum. Um, so I'll turn it over to Jordan. She'll talk about those last few items there as we uh, continue with our updates. Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Millardo. Um, so starting um, about a few weeks ago, we sent out parent and student reflections uh, for our junior parents and guardians that are due around mid-May. So this was the first year that they were actually emailed out to all parents and guardians so that they are able to fill these out and send them back to us. For students, they are posted on their counseling Google Classroom this year. Um, they can just submit it and turn it into us counselors. Um, so this sheet will be really helpful for us to highlight aspects of your students that you would like us to include in their letters of recommendation, things you want us to highlight, things you want us to add, maybe you don't want us to add, um, just to give us a different perspective on your end that their student can give us on their end, highlight activities they do outside of the building, um, clubs and activities here, sports, et cetera. Um, so we thought that that would be an exciting thing to do as well. We also do have hard copies inside of the building. If you do want those two, we can mail those home. But we thought that was a neat option for this year. Um, May through June, we'll be doing schedule review. So next steps uh, in our scheduling process are as follows. So once the master schedule is built, we are then going to review to see what courses students got for next year and then begin to meet with those students. Um, this way, if we need to look at alternate courses um, and options in order to fit their schedule, we can do so before the summer and before kids uh, leave the school building. Um, and then June, we're doing senior exit interviews this year. So this is something a little new, but seniors will meet with each one of their counselor to discuss their next step plans, tell us you know, what job, um, college, where they decided on for next year, which will be nice. We can put all the information into their Naviance account, see what schools they got into, see what schools they possibly maybe did not get into. Um, we also want feedback, what they found valuable from their counseling experience, um, not only from us, but these last four years, um, and ask them you know, what they found great, what helped, what didn't, and then anything else they just wanna let us know. Um, feedback is just great that we can improve for the years to come. So that's kind of what we have for these next few months. We know it sounds kind of jam-packed, but we know it's just valuable information for them and for us as well. Um, are there any questions you guys have possibly for Deb, myself, or Chrissy that we could help you with? Hi, this is Jan. I just had a question. Is that schedule review process new or um, does that happen with every student or how does that work? Yeah. So. 
Go ahead, Deb, were you going to answer? Uh, no, this, so it, it is it is not something new, um, but it's just something that, you know, behind the scenes, once the master schedule is built, which they're in the process of working through, then we review to try to look to try to balance the schedules and make sure students got the courses that they asked and, you know, what was uh, able to be fit in based on the course, course offering. So we review each student's schedule. If we see any conflicts or concerns, we do call the student down. Um, other than that, it's available for them, you know, early fall so that that way, um, you know, they'll be able to see their schedule then, but we just try to look to balance it and make sure that we don't have too many cores or um, if a student didn't get something, we can call them down and say, well, what would you want in place of that? You weren't able to get this elective and you didn't have any alternates down and things like that. So it's just things that we're kind of doing behind the scenes, um, you know, while all the other great happenings with the career day and everything are going to be going on. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Jordan. And thank you, Christy, as well. Obviously, a lot of updates at any moment coming from the school counseling department. So a lot of great work. I would encourage you to reach out if you have any questions or concerns regarding any of the options or topics related to your children. Last but not least, Melanie Witcher is going to talk to us about just briefly our plan for the next generation science assessment that's coming up in the very near future. We'll send more information out, but we just wanted to get this on people's calendars a little sooner than later. So Melanie, thanks for joining us. Thanks, TJ. Hi, everyone. Um, so a very brief update, as TJ had said, this NGSS science assessment is the last a formal assessment from a state standpoint that the students in grade 11 will take. The details are very similar to the recent SAT day that we had. Um, I want to just take a minute to commend the students on how successful the school day SAT was. All students arrived on time with their devices, with their IDs. Um, we had little to no, I, I'd say, hiccups in the day. Um, and that is truly due to the students. So I really want to commend them. The school counseling office was so impressed um, that they came in on time, prepared, and ready to take the assessment. So job well done. Um, we hope for another smooth assessment day on Wednesday, May 24th. It is very similar to the school day. So students in grade 11 all need to arrive by 720. This day is not split between two groups. I know in the SAT day, it was like half the alphabet on one day and half on the other. This is gonna be everybody at one time. And then all of the other students in grades 9, 10, and 12 will come in on a two-hour delay. So the NGSS science assessment is not nearly as long as the school day SAT. So we'll run a two-hour delay on this day. Bus transportation will be available for both the grade 11 students that need to come in at 720 and the rest of the student body that will come in on the two-hour delay. More information on transportation will be sent out, um, as TJ said, in both uh, in notify from him and also when you notify from myself specifically about testing. And then just as a reminder, similar to school day SAT, this science assessment is also digital and is only available on a school issued device. So the good news is that students already use the platform, have their computer updated, like everything. We worked out all the little kinks and bubbles um, during the SAT. So it's basically the exact same platform and experience for the science test. So that's all I have for updates. More details will come once we send out some e-notify messages with the actual specifics, but I'll answer questions if anyone has one. All right, Melanie, great work on that. And I have to thank the counseling department as well, you know, pulling off assessments for an entire grade level that are standardized and computerized is not an easy task. So great work on that piece. Just before I wrap up, I just want to take one opportunity to recognize Mrs. Witcher and Mr. Bodner. It's National Assistant Principals Week this week. They sometimes have thankless jobs and they do incredible work. Our school will not function as efficiently or effectively without them. So I did send a message in my Friday email last week. You could send them a nice card if you'd like, but they definitely deserve recognition for the great work they do. I'd like to again just thank everyone for attending today and have a great day. Hopefully we'll see you in May. That's our last PTO meeting of this school year, which is incredible. Thanks everyone, have a great day.